I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Today we'll be creating with color by piecing a floral illusion quilt and we'll learn some tricks from a very artistic quilter. We've also invited a quilt show judge to join us and give us tips on what they look for in those award-winning quilts. Stay tuned. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, Precision Quilting Machines, A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Millican & Company. The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson and Cindy Walter. Our first guest today is a talented quilter and author. Join me in welcoming Karen Combs. Welcome, Karen. Hi, Cindy. Well, I've seen some beautiful floral illusion quilts around here. Tell me a little bit why or how you create them. Well, as you know, I'm known for f illusions, not floral illusions, but cubes or boxes. Right, the I, re I remember some of mm -hmm. your other quilts. And so how do we make these into florals? Well, I'm using flower designs and I'm creating illusions with floral designs. Great, well let's get started and tell me how easy this is. This is easy, you're gonna love this. Wait, let me ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. Is this for the beginning piecer? Absolutely. Okay, super, I love right. those type of projects. But what's nice is when you're finished, it does not look like an easy quilt. Oh yeah, because some of them look complex, but mm -hmm. they're not. It's it's just an illusion. Okay, good. Let's get started. All right. Them. Um, we're going to start with some very simple shapes, squares. And you can see I have three squares here. Those are two and a half inches. Okay. I'm using fabrics that do not have much of a texture, kind of tone on tone. And I'm using blues or purples or blue violets. Okay. So I want three of those. Then I want one square that's two, in, uh, two and a half inches, okay. orange. But then we're going to do something different. We need some three inch squares. And I need some that are cream, you can see here, or white. Then I need uh, orange and blue. Because we're going to piece the three inch squares together to create this type of a triangle. Right. Okay, good. Right. So show me how we do that. Okay, here I have the three inch orange square. These are scrappy, so don't worry that this does not match this. Yeah, it makes a little, it's more fun, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's three inches. Here's the three inch cream square. I'm going to lay that right on top of each other. Then I'm going to take a ruler and a sharp pencil and I'm going to draw a line just so I can see it. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch on either side. Okay. And it looks like this when you get that done. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is going to cut it apart on the pencil line. If people haven't pieced a triangle like this, a triangle square, they're going to be amazed because that's a yeah. super great way to it's do so it. It's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy. All right, here it is. And then I'm going to press this. So we just finger press it open mm -hmm. or do you take it actually to the, um, to the ironing board? I like to finger press it, but you can also press it with the iron. Okay. But then we have one more step okay. because I, I cut them a little large because I want to then square it up to exactly two and a half inches. You oh, can see perfect. it's just and you a... you have the right size ruler, mm -hmm. so you line it's it up. It's perfect. See, it's oh, just a word. little big. Mm -hmm. That way I can uh, trim around it, and then it's the perfect size. Great. So once I do that, now you can see I've got it all laid out here. I sew it into rows. Just... So now you're just creating a nine patch. Absolutely. That's it's easy. actually a variation of a split nine patch. Yeah, that's right. And now watch what I just did. Do you see how... <gasps> You made, made an illusion mm -hmm. just by trading there it those is. around. Just because this is a very simple shape, but that's the block. It gets sewn together and it looks like this. Amazing. So we have this side is the dark. Yes. And then this is lighter and the flower is in the lighter side on that one. Yes. And mm -hmm. notice that I've used a warm color. 
like red, orange, or yellow, because warm pops. And I oh. want those tulips to pop. That's beautiful. Let's take a look at this quilt right here, a different okay. occasion. All right, um, that is called Amish Spring. Oh, it's beautiful. And actually, that one's a fun one because you can do different designs with it. Let oh. me show you what I mean. Here's the block. See, okay. it's created of several blocks. The flower block, then also this split block. When you put it together, it creates that quilt, but look what you can do. That is amazing. You can make four quilts in one mm -hmm. with the same block. You can. So once you learn how to do those blocks, you can mm -hmm. make all these variations. These are exactly the same blocks. It's just amazing. Wonderful. And I see this beautiful one be behind us. The that one is called Star Glow. Oh, it's beautiful. That has the illusion of motion using repeated shapes over and over again. I notice it's dark and light, like the cherry, too. Does that help with the movement? It does. If you notice, there is a dark red and also a medium red, and that does help give a little bit of depth. Now, did you paper piece? Because you have some sharp points in that one. Yeah, that okay. one is paper pieced, okay. um, because can you imagine trying no. to piece that any other job. way? So paper piecing, that's a great way mm -hmm. to do that one. We, now, have, um, we have another one, and this one is a... Well, it does not look simple, but it is simple to piece, mm -hmm. so it can be for the beginner, but when you're done, it does not look like a beginning quilt. Mm -hmm. This one also, look at the variations you can do. Oh, the, the variations are just amazing, because people think you're very talented, but it's the same block, you're just turning it. Absolutely. That's and truly an illusion. It is an <laughs> illusion, and yeah. the students love this because they can make one set of blocks, but then look at all the different designs that you can do That's with it. That's great. On your next quilt, then, you... Put, uh, and that one's called Cottage Garden, mm -hmm. and that one was inspired by Cape Cod mm -hmm. quilts. Well, not Cape Cod quilts, but gardens in Cape Cod, mm -hmm. and that one has a little picket fence. Yeah, around the edges there's a picket fence. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, um, that one also has some piece designs that okay. are traditionally piece, but also foundation piece. Okay. Now, let me show you another quilt. We have a lattice in our backyard. And often I look through the lattice and I see flowers through the lattice and that was the inspiration for this particular now, quilt. Now the, does the lattice create the illusion on that? It or does. the flowers? Well it's a little of both because if okay. you notice it's transparent. Yeah it's very bold. It's a beautiful yes. quilt. And the lattice does create some of that illusion. Well, it's the, a floral illusion. Yeah it's beautiful. And this one, oh, this is one of my favorite too. Mm -hmm. Very soft. This is inspired by, by Monet's mm -hmm. Water Lilies Looks painting. Looks just like a Monet mm -hmm. painting. Look at the quilting on this one. This was done on a long arm machine. Just beautiful. That's a great job. You know, one of my very favorite quilts of yours is of, of the floral illusions mm -hmm. is the blue one. Tell me about that. That one uh, is called Spider Webs and Fairy Flowers. There's a line in one of Shakespeare's plays called that. And this one is paper pieced and traditionally pieced. It's the cover of the, my book. Oh yes, it's the cover mm -hmm. of your book. So did you paper piece the sharper points yes. and? Well, and then the other uh, shapes that are easier, I piece traditionally, much like we just did mm -hmm. with this other quilt. Now that quilt has batik fabrics in it, mm -hmm. and I've used some that are tone on tone and some that have more pattern, and that just makes the quilt pop. How do you quilt a quilt like that that has so many different lines and movement? Do you follow the actual movement that you're trying to have their eye flow to? Or? Well, in that one, since it was inspired by the lined spider webs and fairy flowers, there are some spider webs quilted in it. Oh, interesting. And then some of the shapes are repeated in the quilting, so it imitates the piecing that you see. Interesting. Karen, you are so talented, and oh, I'm I really glad that. that you could be here with us it's today. Been fun. It has been. I just love your quilts. Oh, thanks so much. Let's Let's go back to Janie and see what she and Kathy are doing. Today we have with us Kathy Franks, a celebrity long arm teacher and a good friend of mine. Hi Kathy. Hi Janie, thanks for having me back again. What have you brought us today? Oh Janie, I've brought some wonderful ideas to share with you. I want you to think of this long arm machine as an overgrown sewing machine head. Anything you can do with a straight stitch with your domestic machine, you can do with this I long agree. arm. Let me show you something really quick. Say you've taken a piece of fabric out of your stash and you go, oh my gosh, what was I thinking when I bought that? Don't worry about it. Just put a piece of thread in your machine that you think is going to complement that fabric and stitch on it. Let me show you quickly here. You're just going to stitch back and forth, up and down, in any direction that you want to. You can even do little curly cues. And you know, Janie, 
I do a lot of heavy threads in my machine. You're really good with tech questions. Can you give me some advice on which needle to use? I sure can. You can buy the same size needle in different brands and lay them out and look at them. And some of them have like a bug eye mm -hmm. or wider eye and some have a narrower sculpture to them. And the wider one might help you carry that heavier thread, but it will build a little more heat. So you need to use not a, not a mylar thread, but a good cotton thread. And then the slimmer ones will carry some and they'll, it'll work better to have that. So you should have a couple different kinds in your little tool bag so you can try them out with your thread. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. That'll help me to keep my threads from breaking. Well, let me show you what this technique looks like on a piece of fabric. This was a piece of fabric that I bleached, discharged, and over dyed, and I didn't particularly care for it. So I first put the gold thread on it, uh -huh. and then I put the blue thread Looks on it. It's almost like a plaid then. It really is wonderful. And what you can do then is cut that into your strips, and then I cut that into squares, sewed them together, and I now have custom made fabric. A border. For my quilt. A border for my quilt. Nobody else will have that. That, that puts is you one unique. notch ahead of everybody else. Wow, that is nice. Another technique that I want to show you is one called couching. And couching is when you take a yarn or a thread of your choice and put it around something. This is an example of couching. To highlight it, it helps to highlight it. And you can get any kind of yarn or thread that you want to. This is an example of a yarn. And let me just take this to the side here. I want you to be careful when you do this, though, because you don't need to punch any holes <laughs> in your fingers. This hurts with this machine, let me tell you. So when you start it, really have your fingers wide apart. Then you're just going to stitch this down. Now it's anchored. I can take this and hold it taut and just stitch over the top of it. Zigzag, just a little zigzag, over. anything. Stop, move the thread, and you can go in another direction. Wow, you can nice. also do it in curves by just holding the thread and guiding it. Another wonderful thing you can do with yarn is something that I call fringing. And this is a sample of the fringing. Oh, it's right this here. Is so nice. And you can do fringing with anything. My favorite is chenille, which is what is on right here. Oh, it's really it's chenille. It's easy to do with the long arm. Mm -hmm. All you're going to do is you're going to take and loop the yarn up under the hopping foot like this. Just loop it and then just stitch over the top of it and keep looping until you get to the end of your finished project. That is beautiful. Like this. It's a wonderful technique and it adds a lot of interest to I'll what you're say, working sure on. Does. The next thing I want to show you is this. I like to call it flash and trash I because that's exactly that. what it is. It's a wonderful technique. And what you do with flash and trash is you take little bits of fabric that you have, that you want to use. Scrap. Scraps. You know those yarns, those metallic threads yes. that you have? Put that in the mix. And then you're going to take your rotary cutter and you're just going to cut it up into tiny little bits. This is a great technique when, when you're really mad at somebody <laughs> and you just want to get that aggression out. You just go like this. Cut it up into little tiny bits. Then you're going to get your fusible webbing and you're going to sprinkle it onto your fusible webbing. You put a protective sheet over the top of that to keep the glue from the fusible web going onto your iron. Press it, let this sit for a few seconds, and what you've created is your own fabric. You just peel oh. this off. The fusible web is here under the bottom. I see. And let's just put this to the side. You're going to take this and you can cover up raw edges of things that you're working on to hide those. Oh, so you can applique and then finish it off. Correct. And what I'm doing here is I'm making a little tree with these little colors here. You can actually take your iron over uh, to your long arm at this point, press it with your iron, and then to stitch this down, just bring this over and stitch across the top. And that keeps everything stitched down securely. And I actually like to use a thread in here that contrasts so it gives a little depth oh, to it. so you can see your work. Exactly. One of my favorite colors is black. Oh, thread. yeah, that always black accents is a, everything. It's a fabulous thread to use. Another technique is something that I call motif sewing. 
and that is when you find a wonderful fabric like these leaves mm -hmm. or the sunflowers. I see you have that one over here. I have one over here to demonstrate for you. The way that you use this is back the back with some fusible webbing that you like okay. and get a lightweight fusible web, not a heavy weight okay. because you're going to be you sewing through it. it. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that, then cut the shape, the shape out. Okay. Don't cut this out before you put the fusible webbing on right. it because it's way too hard to get those two to join up. Fuse it to the fabric that you want to use. Then come over here and I'm just going to stitch around the edges to give it a little depth and architectural interest to the item that I'm using. An example is right here where I've taken those wonderful variegated threads and stitched here to give it interest. And here's a sample of it with the black. Okay. And you can see how wonderful that is. I see you have some wrinkled up fabric in here too. That is easy to do with a pleater tape. And you want to get a fabric that looks really, really good when you're going to be pleating it up. The key to doing this is putting the fabric in upside down in your pleater tape. And you can just take your fingers and go into the louvers of the pleater tape. And to make sure you have a nice crisp edge, take a hard card, like an old charge card, and go back and forth across here, like just this. Get that out, pleated Get up. that in there, put a piece of fusible web across here, and put it down here, and you're done. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You have shown us so many wonderful techniques. Thank you, Janie. Kathy, let's take a look at some of your other beautiful quilts. Welcome, Claudine. Well, thank you very much. It was delightful to receive an invitation to come to Quilt Central. I think some of our viewers would like to know a little bit about your qualifications or how you got to be a, a certified judge. Well, I did go through the National Quilting Association program to become a certified judge. I am also a teacher and an editor of Quilt Art Calendars. Hmm. Now, I know when all the quilts you must see at the show must be overwhelming. How do you get started? I mean, do you look for the good things, the bad things? How do you get started? You're right when you say overwhelming. And yes, we look at the overall quilt. It is a difficult decision to make. It's the hardest work we do, but we do look at the overall quilt, and not look, just a small part of it. And you look for the good or the bad? We look for what is successful. Oh, what good. did this quilt maker do that really worked? Oh, that's good. I know your job must be really hard. And Cindy and I were wondering, because Cindy's mostly patchwork and hand work and I'm long arm and we find those are in the same category sometimes and we were wondering how the judges can judge one against the other. One of the things we look for is stitch quality and so we are looking for stitches that are even and smooth whether or not there's a curve or a dip and that needs to be done on both machine and hand quilting. Likewise starts and stops quilting design but that is one aspect of the quilt. Remember, we are also looking at the color and the design and the balance and all of the rest of those all artistic the things. Picture. The other thing we know too, that it's very hard, we, you're in the mix when you're teaching and you, and you meet so many people. And when, when you know some background about someone or you know someone that has a quilt and you're judging and you know whose quilt that is, how can you remain impartial? Well, one of the things I've discovered is that we don't always know who made it because many of the quilt makers are also teachers. So we can't tell if it's a teacher's quilt that we know or whether it's a student's quilt that copied it very close. Oh, interesting. The other thing is when we look at quilts, we don't, um, in quilt shows, we enjoy them. We don't judge them. When we're judging them, we have to look at them with different eyes. Oh, that's a nice point of view. And tell us about the ones sitting here on the table. The ones sitting here on the table would be what I expect to receive 
look at when I'm looking at miniature quilt category. And the first thing I'm noticing is that this one and this one both seem to be out of scale. Okay, they so would not look great if they were a full size quilts. These seem to be more in scale. This one would be great as a king size quilt and this one would be great as a large quilt. This one has a little bit bigger stitches on it or a a thicker thread on it. This one has a finer thread. So if I were judging them, this one was the one that I would pick. Interesting. And how about this beautiful one in front of us and behind totally us? Totally pineapple pattern, which is something that uh, is a very traditional pattern. And in this particular case, it is a successful quilt. The borders, edges are very attractive. But the one behind me required so much more thought process in choosing the fabrics oh. and the locations of the fabrics. So I think that as that aspect of quilting has become very important over what colors you pick and where you put them and how much difficulty there was involved in that process. Mm -hmm. So if you can give me one tip or give our viewers one tip on what they should do that what you would look for. I would tell them to look at the whole quilt because it's the whole quilt that's judged, not just the little pieces and parts. So stand back and look at it all together. That's right. Well, I'm so thankful to have such a skilled person here today to help us, and I'm sure all the viewers really will enjoy your tips. Yes, thank you, Claudine. Thank you. You have really been working. You've yeah. been piecing a quilt again. I did. This pine tree quilt was so fun to make, and the only thing that took me, or that I want to explain to you, is this center block right here, because it had a lot of little pieces in it. I have so many greens in my stash, I know I should be cutting a quilt like that. Yeah, and when you use these rulers, you can cut all those little pieces and get them to line up perfectly without any problem. So I'll show you, I cut a two inch strip, set my ruler on top there, and I'm just gonna cut that quickly. I should let you cut it, because you're over on that side. This is one of those that you hardly have any waste with it. That's right, because then I'm just gonna flip my ruler around, and oops, take it on the other side. There you out. go. Won't be anything See how that there's no waste. It's really good. And the, t the tip to this ruler, one of the wonderful things besides no waste, one of the wonderful things is that I'm going to trim off this little tip here. And that's going to help me in a moment when I try to line up my second piece on top of that. That'll be neat. Yeah, so I just trim that off. There we go. There we go. Now, the second part to my pine tree is the, found the part behind the tree, the ecru part. Just line up my other type of ruler, cut it. It's like your background piece to this. It is, and the other, this ruler works the same, where I spin it around, and again, there's no waste. I just spin it around, cut my second piece. Now, I can take these and line them up, and look how beautifully this lines up. I'll just set this on here so you can see. Because that little notch is right That's off That's right, there. so when I turn this in over on top of it, it lines up perfectly like okay. that. And this a one will line up. There. So here I have one that I lined up perfectly. I sewed it, finger press it open, sew on your second half here, and that's your pine tree part. The next part I have to do is put on the framing blocks, which are the ones that go around the pine tree, and I cut it also, them also, with a real nifty ruler where I just simply cut them. Now I put framing blocks into a lot of things, so that would be really. Yes, and again, this framing block with this oh, ruler has that off, pointed also. off, so you know right so where to cut. Match up. So when your block is completely done, like this one is completely done, I can just set my framing right around it, and my block is finished. That is really nice. I think I'll put that one here. There. I, I know they've, we've seen a bunch of other quilts that are done with this, too. One of my favorites is the, um, the fish quilt uh -huh. and the log cabin quilt. It's a... Paul Bunyan and his cabin quilt. Oh, that's right. Yes. Cute quilt. Well, you can make almost any type of quilt with a ruler if you have the right ruler. Right, because it's just just a little bitty tip if you just want to do a little tiny fish or a little tiny That's tree. right, and you cut your strips the width that your ruler is. If you want a big piece, you cut your strips long or small. And this piece of here? Well, these are the corners of the whole entire quilt because this quilt, the blocks are on the diagonal. So you need something at the very end of the diagonal. And to get that, I cut my big piece 14 inches wide, and 14 inches square, and then cut that at the diagonal and to get four. this piece. And then that's the, the side pieces here. And then I cut a seven inch and cut that one in half once for the corners. How simple. Thank you, Cindy. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Quilt Central. 
Quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. My hair didn't get enough sleep. <laughs> All right. Hide my hairy hairbrush from you quickly. <laughs> Our first guest today is a talented quilter and author. Welcome me. <laughs> Welcome her. <laughs> Join me. Okay. okay. Today we have with us. I started out already. <laughs> Quilt Central is made possible in part by Genomi America. Genomi, because you simply love to sew. American Quilters Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, Precision Quilting Machines, A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Millican and Company, The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Now you can celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or 1-866-723-8224.